morning. morning. A warm welcome this morning on this nice snowy day. We also are uh, welcoming our friends from St. Mark's again, streaming in. So hi, hi folks in South Milwaukee. Uh, We'll begin our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 on either the first page of your seasonal booklet or page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now continue with the Decalogue on, in your booklet or on page 317. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no no other gods but me. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of any thing that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us say together Psalm 95 as found in your insert. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Mirabah and at the day of Masa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. The second reading is from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we'll be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, Ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket. And the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I give will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. 
The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, it is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought in something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more and then the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one who sows, one sows and another reaps. I have sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you enter into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We really do live in an age of miracles. You know, almost in no time in history or in any place in the world has this been true, but you can reach out your hand and do this, and water appears in your house, right in front of you. In fact, you can do this 
and regulate the temperature of the water, both hot and cold on demand. Now, we think of this being so every day because, well, we do this multiple times a day for many reasons, but it's not the way it's always been and it's not the way it is everywhere. In fact, not only is this miracle available to us, but we can turn that tap on and drink straight from that water without a whole lot of fear that we're going to get sick from it. We have such an abundance of clean water available to us that we use it to bathe in and for sanitation. But of course, that's unusual in the world. Most people have had to for centuries and even still carry, seek out clean water and carry it long distances just to use it. And this is why we have the story today, actually both stories in our, uh, both Exodus and in John's gospel about water. Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well in Sychar is pretty extraordinary in many ways. In fact, if, if I had the time and I wanted to preach a 45-minute sermon on just this passage, don't tempt me, people. Because there is so much there. Part of it is a really long gospel reading. I mean, you know, that does add to it. But there is so much packed into this reading. It's pretty amazing. Uh, the woman at the well in Christian tradition has been later named Saint Fotini. And she has quite an extraordinary story of her own, which again, another 45-minute sermon. Um, but I digress. <clears throat> What's really amazing about this story is that Jesus knew her without her even knowing who he was. He shared a drink and time with her, even though there were many reasons he should not have. I mean, first of all, she's a woman, and this was not, men and women did not interact in, in this time period. Not much, at least. Secondly, she was a foreigner, but not just a foreigner, she was a Samaritan. And there's this whole conflict, which you kind of gather from the reading here, that the Samaritans worshipped on a different mountain in Samaria, and Jews, Judeans, worshipped on the mountain in Jerusalem. And they had a long-standing conflict over this, which, again, is a long backstory. But further than this, this woman seemed to have lived quite a... <clears throat> notorious life. Now, what we do know about her is she's had five husbands and now she's living with a guy who is not her husband. We don't have a whole lot more information than that. We don't know if, you know, she's just kind of like Liz Taylor and went through them or, you know, by husband number four should be checking on what's in the meatloaf. We don't know. That, that was a joke, people. It's, I know you all lost an hour of sleep, but you know, anyway. All right. But you got to love this moment because this interchange they have is a little bit playful. <clears throat> Despite all that, you know, she's kind of razzing Jesus a little bit and he's giving it back. And that's the best part. Oh yeah, where are you going to get this water, you Mr. No Bucket? And then, you know, oh, well, why don't you go call your husband and come back? you got to love this way that Jesus is very playful with people. And in a way, what I really love about these times that are very clear in the gospel that Jesus is playful is that he does it in kind of a loving way. He sort of pokes at somebody, but then uses it to reveal something and then uses it to re reveal that he actually really cares about the person. It, it's a really wonderful way that Jesus does this. And even though, because even though he knew everything she had done, knew that she was a bit of a scandalous person, in the end, he still showed her 
love, and compassion. Now, shouldn't this, right there, we could cut it off and say, boy, that is the good news of the gospel, right? Jesus does the same for all of us. You know, we've all had our mishaps, our ways that we've all made mistakes, done some things we're not proud of, and yet Jesus still shows us love and he just wants to show us love. Like the woman, Jesus wants to give all of us living water. Backing up to Exodus, we have the story about Moses in the desert. And there's a crisis. The people of Israel have no water. Exodus tells us that they quarreled and tested the Lord. In fact, the psalm reminds us of this. They quarreled at Meribah and Massah. Reality is, of course, that if you're in the desert and you have no water, that is a really big problem. It, it should be no wonder that they were quarreling. Um, they had seen how, they had already seen how God had delivered them from Egypt. They'd seen the miracles. But you know, people forget. We have short memories. And as resources run thin, tensions get high. I think about this all the time when I've seen conflicts in church and <clears throat> society at large. What do they come from? They come from this perception that there is scarcity. And when there's scarcity, what do, what do people do? We start to get anxious and we start to scapegoat. And then in the end, God provides water by having Moses strike the rock. Water is life. It is interesting that both the surface of the earth and our bodies are about 75%, maybe more accurately, 78% water. We drink water, it refreshes us, we use it to cleanse us, it keeps diseases away. And especially in a desert culture like these two stories, water is a very precious commodity. So much, and that, but yet there is so much in our lives that is not like water. We have so much in our life that is not life-giving. It even drains us. There's exhaustion, conflict, difficult choices, worry, and they all take life from us. And that's where Jesus talks about living water. Water that gives life, gives eternal life. Water that does not run out. This is the water that refreshes us. It cleanses us from all those things that bog us down. It is the forgiveness that Christ offers. It is the teaching and guidance we have in Scripture. It is the sacraments that draw us closer to God. And it is the love that we experience with one another, especially in Christian community. All of those good things that Christ gives us, those, friends, that is the living water that leads to eternal life. In this time of Lent, we are called to examine our own lives, looking at our own flaws, our sins, our shortcomings. And doing any of that would be pointless if there were no grace. I mean, I could look at my sins all day, but if there's no grace... Why do it, other than to feel bad about myself? If there were no forgiveness or reconciliation or amendment of life, why even have Lent? But we do this because there is the assurance of God's grace, and this grace is that living water that refreshes us. And knowing we have this grace also means that we are then to show grace to others. Jesus at the well was not just pointing out that he knew everything that this woman had done. It was about showing her that what she had done did not matter in the eyes of God. Isn't that not wonderful? And what's even more wonderful is then 
Now that she has this burden lifted off her shoulders, what does she do? She goes into town and she shares it with everybody else. It's this water that keeps springing forth. When we bring the good news of our salvation into the world, when we run into other sinners of the Lord's redeeming, just like us, it's then that we get to share that grace and show them that God's grace is in them too, is in their redeeming too. That is how we have been refreshed by God's grace and share that living water by showing that we know we have been given God's grace and recognizing and sharing it with all whom we meet. Please stand. And in your seasonal booklet or on page 327, let us say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, and from all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, who suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven and seated on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one of the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Almighty and ever living God who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live into, in unity and godly love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of South India United, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Matthew, our interim priest, Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Robin, Sharon, Connie, Deanna, and Pat, our vestry and clerk, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Let us pray to the Lord. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for their welfare and peace of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people, especially our parish cycle of prayer, Cindy Lawrence and those celebrating birthdays. Zachariah Halling said, Payne McCann, Cindy Lawrence, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Deacon Deanna, Deacon George Agner, Margie Beely, Jane Clothier, Sue Hallingstead, Cindy Lawrence, Betty Lorenzi, Mary Nichols, Jerry Ramsey, Gary Twist, Sharon Twist, David Toretta, Jimmy and Tommy Yanni, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith, and especially Betty Lorenzi, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, grace so to follow the good examples of St. John the Divine and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are perfectly sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. In the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. They stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother hath aught against thee. Leave there thy gift and go. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift.
come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to you. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sit by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be 
a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favoring goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and in all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory world without end. Amen. You may be seated for a few announcements. Well, a um, number of... Well, first of all, do we have any birthdays this week? Seeing none. Any anniversaries? As you get into Lent tide, not as many happen, but... Well, um, things going on in the near future. We have, uh, we're going to be doing after the service during coffee hour, our last, I think it'll be my last all parish meeting with all of you. I just want to talk about where we see ourselves going in the future. Uh, as we've talked all, about all kinds of things uh, over the last 18 months or so. Um, I'm just going to kind of look ahead a little bit. I say it's the last all parish meeting because in April, uh, the second Sunday of the month will fall on Easter, and well, you know. So, uh, but I just want to look ahead and say, well, where do where do we want to go as a parish moving forward? Um, things coming up. Uh, remember, our March outreach project uh, will be gift cards for Love Inc. Um, Wednesdays in Lent, we are continuing to do Stations of the Cross. We have had a really good attendance of people coming to Stations of the Cross, and even more extraordinary, how many was it, uh, 205 views online, which is, uh, we're really getting a pretty big reach for that service, so uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a powerful uh, mini pilgrimage around walking the way of Jesus' last moments, and uh, anyway, so it's been a really good and a good thing to do together, and we also then gather afterwards for soup following. Um, as a reminder, we have a uh, silent movie night on April 1st. The movie is From the Manger to the Cross. It is a, what is it, about a 1918 or so? 1912 silent film, uh, live accompanied by our organist. And uh, then, of course, uh, Holy Week will be coming up. We will be doing here at the church, uh, at St. John's, we'll be doing uh, our regular Wednesday Stations of the Cross uh, during Holy Week, and then Good Friday at, I think I said 6.30, but I'm now blanking at what time that was, because this is what happens when you don't write things down. Um, <clears throat> no, probably 6 o'clock. And then... Um, uh, Easter Vigil will be right around sunset at 7.30, and then Easter morning. Monday, Thursday, we will be, uh, it'd be great, we're going to be joining together, actually, both Monday, Thursday, and the Vigil with uh, Holy Communion Lake Geneva. It'd be wonderful if we could take a good contingency down to Holy Communion. I'll be participating in the liturgy as a priest. And then on uh, the Easter Vigil, Mother Liz Mead will be here with us, participating in the Vigil with us. So we're going to be kind of trying to bridge some of those gaps between us and Lake Geneva and worshiping together as fellow Christians uh, because it is the holiest time of the year. And I got to say, that's probably all I have. Any other announcements? Going once, going twice. All right. I'm going to send a thumbs up to our friends over at St. Mark's and let us know we're done with announcements. There we go. Please stand for the final prayer over the people. Or actually, kneel if you are able, stand if you are able. I'm sorry, but either way. 
Bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully upon this thy family, Almighty God, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we will close with our final hymn, which is hymn 690, 690.